guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another E55 AMG Whipple Wagon video. Today, we're doing a lot. We're installing some shiny long tube headers, a really cool cold air intake, some more pulleys on the front of the engine. We got a tune to upload. We're gonna go for a ride as well. But first, something's broken. Listen to this. Uh, of course, it's not doing it right now. So I had to shuffle some cars around here at Legit Street Quarters so the engine isn't totally cold. But at first start, when the engine is cold, there is a ticking noise from this area. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably an exhaust leak. This does have mid-length headers, so it could be a gasket leak or something like that. Um, doesn't really matter too much since we're, we're gonna be basically replacing everything, but I still wanna figure it out before we move forward. Aha, I found it. We have a cracked passenger side header. So right below that last primary tube, you can see the crack along the weld. So I'm not exactly sure how long it's been like that, but I just noticed it now. And uh, yeah, there we go, diagnosed. I just wanna show you the smile on my face. I was just about to point the camera at these parts and explain to you what they are and where they're from. And this is the smile I had on my face the whole time because these are going on the wagon. This is gonna be so cool. And if you guys have been around for a while, you know about two or three years ago, I installed the same set on my 2003 E55 AMG sedan. And just like in that video, these are from vrpspeed.com and they normally sell for $1,375. And that includes the midsection and all of these connection pieces so it bolts right up. But for a very limited time, if you guys use coupon code LEGIT, so you're gonna get these for $999. It's a crazy, crazy deal. So if you've been thinking about long tubes, definitely take advantage. All right, so before we do anything, we have to spray some penetrating oil all over the place. All the way up there too. O2 sensor, fine, we're gonna soak it all. No, you're not gonna snap off, stud. See? Aha. All right, first step is removing this center brace, definitely the easiest part of the entire job. And I'm going to link the old video down below because I go over everything. It's a full long tube header installation video for the E55. Um, but anyway, you gotta start off by picking the right size wrench, that helps. All right. Didn't break anything. So far, so good. This is just threaded rod, that's all it is. There are two nuts on each side. Okay, that works, I guess. This is not fun. All right, I'm gonna take this one large exhaust bracket off in one piece. A couple of 13s. And don't let this fall to the ground. It's kind of all sandwiched in there with a rubber isolator. Not the hardest thing to figure out if you have to put it all back together later, but just leave it like this. Save yourself some time. All right, we'll disconnect our O2 sensors. Nice and easy. These are color coded, so you have the white ones here and the black ones here, so you cannot mess this up. And now we're just gonna do the flange bolts. Oh, these are coming out so nice. We'll do three more on the driver's side, and then this whole midsection should come out. Is there not one up there? Yeah, that one was missing. Right? That one was missing, okay. All right, at this point, just give it a little shimmy. All right, just need a little break here. Okay, I'm back. There we go. Get out. Ugh. Is that the AMG overhead press? Yes, that's the AMG overhead press. We got Peter, my personal trainer, recording. And uh, wow, this is, this is pretty heavy, I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna save some weight, although I will be reinstalling catalytic converters on this car. Um, so we're gonna be deleting them just temporarily in this video. And then we're gonna go back with them. I've run cats on all my cars now. All right, so I'm gonna get some of these exhaust manifold nuts from the top, but the vast majority are gonna come out through the bottom. We could probably get all of them through the bottom. I should just watch my old E55 header video, literally follow my own instructions. But this, this works too, you know, just figuring it all out again. First nut off, the stud didn't come with, that is great. And uh, this blower, if you guys didn't see the other video, 
is way lighter than the factory blower. So with the new supercharger and the new exhaust, I think we're removing like 75 pounds or something like that from the front end of the E55. So that is fantastic. I'm a big fan of saving weight and a big fan of saving money. And with the amount of cars that I own, I need to save money anywhere I can, which is why I love shopping for better and more affordable insurance with Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes saving money on home and auto insurance easy. Just click the link in the description or go to policygenius.com slash legit streetcars. From there, you'll answer a few questions and then Policy Genius will show you price estimates that fit your search and help you understand your options. Policy Genius will look for ways to save you money and if they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you for free. Now get this, customers who have bundled their home and auto insurance with Policy Genius have saved an average of $1,250 per year compared to what they were paying, which means you could use that money you saved and get yourself some long tube headers for your E55. So they are truly your one-stop shop for home and auto insurance, and they don't sell any of your information or tack on any extra fees. So Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance company. And if you want to get started today with a free quote and find out how much Policy Genius can save you, then just click on my link in the video description box down below or go to policygenius.com slash legit streetcars. All right guys, just have one more nut here. I got most of these from the bottom. This guy's loose. There we go. Let the last nut off. Okay, we're taking the steering shaft down. Like that. And like that. There's our little mid-length. Very nice. Here's a good size comparison. So you can just imagine the flow from that one is gonna be much, much easier. And you can expect to gain about 30 wheel horsepower just from switching to long tubes. You'll actually lower the amount of boost the engine needs to produce to make that additional power as well. So less heat and your engine's gonna last longer. It's not working as hard. All right, now we're on the passenger side with the cracked manifold. One last nut. There we go. Okay. Wow, yeah, we had a straight up hole in here. Cracked right at the welds. Thought these were usually pretty good. These are probably very, very old though. And the car does have like 146,000 miles. So anyway, bye-bye. All right, next up, we are installing new engine mounts. These are also from Victory Road Performance. And these are kind of a new hybrid engine mount that they have, which has a polyurethane center core and then silicone rings on the bottom portion and the top portion. And so the idea here is that it's not gonna transfer that much vibration into the cabin, but it's also gonna be much stronger than the factory mounts because especially after you modify these cars, those tend to go bad all the time. And as you're about to see, once we get the long tubes in there, you don't wanna to have to do engine mounts again. Now, if you guys were around for the original E55 long tube header insulation video, then you know I use the factory Mercedes black series engine mounts and that is still an excellent option if you guys want a factory mount that offers a little bit more durability but another advantage to these and the reason i'm going with these is because they drop the engine about 10 millimeters and with this exhaust system when i did the last one i noticed that the fitment was a little tight and we ended up having to do a little bit of custom exhaust work uh, to get it to line up properly and i remember thinking back then i'm like man if the engine was just lower all of this would fit much nicer. So eventually they came out with the 10 millimeter lower engine mounts uh, from VRP. And normally I'm not really into a harsh engine mount. I don't want a lot of vibration in there. So then they came out with the silicone rings, which is supposed to fix that. And I'll definitely give you guys my feedback as soon as this is running. All right, with the exhaust manifolds out of the way, look at how much room we have to replace these engine mounts. So nice. Look at this, there's nothing here. our top bolt with the shield. And this one's just about as easy as the other side. Then we just have the lower engine mount bolts. And then I already removed the two 13 millimeters for the transmission mount. We're not gonna be replacing this because this actually got a fresh transmission from Mercedes maybe 20,000 miles ago. It was 
$6,500 at the dealership. The previous owner did it. Uh, but anyway, we took those bolts out. We're gonna leave that trans mount alone. And then we're just using our little screw jack here with a block of wood. And we are raising the engine. It's gonna raise up and then without anything in the way, we can take these guys out. And I think these were recently replaced also. Here's the driver's side. So yeah, this engine mount looks to be in excellent condition. It hasn't collapsed at all. And here you can get a good idea of what the 10 millimeter drop looks like. And just like they came out, the new ones go right back in. And then before I do anything, I like to line up the bottom hole right there. And then we're just gonna get this factory bolt started by hand. If you guys have these manifold gaskets that got stuck, Pin snips are the way to go. Just throw them out immediately. You will slice your fingers up with these. All right, now we're going down with the engine. And you can see there's a notch here and there's a little guide pin at the top of the engine mount. So don't tighten up that bolt just yet. Just wanna guide this perfectly down when you're lowering it. So with one hand, I'm just holding them out and the other hand, I'm twisting the bottle jack. And now the pin is right here in the notch. All right, so from there, we'll just drop the engine down completely. Then you can reinstall the factory heat shields and the rubber boots on the factory mounts. I leave those off. They don't fit very well on the aftermarket engine mounts. And then after you tighten all of these up, you're ready for your long tubes. Now you do get some really thick graphite gaskets in the header kit, but I'm not a big fan of those. You don't want to run into any leaking issues. So I like to use factory exhaust manifold gaskets any chance I can, especially when they're really nice steel ones like they are from Mercedes. So you're gonna get eight individual gaskets and fcpeuro.com sells an amazing kit. It's an exhaust manifold hardware kit. So they give you everything. Some of this stuff you're not gonna use for the header job, but it's good to have around, especially if you're working on other cars. And this is less expensive than going to the dealer just for the gaskets and the nuts for the studs, which are right here. So at the very least, you're gonna wanna get these, um, but I'll leave a link down below to this kit. I've worked with FCP Euro on making kits like this before in the past, and they do a really good job of listening to us enthusiasts and putting together exactly what we need. Um, so if you're doing an exhaust manifold job, this is everything. You don't have to research each and every part number. All of our brand new factory steel gaskets are installed. And now it is time. Time for the long tubes. I know we got a lot of room right now, but these guys are big. This is the hard side with the steering shaft. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. You gotta shimmy it in there, guys. It might look impossible uh, for a few minutes, but it does fit. I can verify it. It does fit. All right, the side is theoretically easier. Is that seriously it? That seriously. <laughs> wow, yeah. Theoretically easier and definitely easier in real life. Awesome. All right, so from here I have one nut started that I drew in quite a bit and that's gonna hold the header nice and flush to the head. And now we can just go around and get to all the other nuts. We're gonna have to do quite a few of these from the top, as you can see. We went from having all the clearance in the world to no clearance whatsoever. Um, so anyway, I'm going to struggle with nuts for probably about an hour, and then we're moving on to the midsection. All right, guys, so we have the headers completely bolted in, and I ran into this last time. It was way worse last time because of the engine mounts, but I ran into a little clearance issue right here. It's no big deal at all. You just gotta push up this little heat shield here, just like that. And then this does have clearance. It's hard for you guys probably to see that, but I just want a little bit more. So I'm just gonna push up on this gently. All right, now we got a ton of clearance and we're good. All right, now we're gonna go back in with our oxygen sensors. And this is a great time to replace your oxygen sensors if they're old or faulty but these were switching just fine. I don't suspect any issue with them. A little bit of anti-seize never hurt also. So for now, we're gonna leave these bare. They will get O2s once we go in with some rear cats. I'm gonna look into some extenders here for these front O2s because they don't quite fit in the factory slots. It's fine, you could probably just do one of these and call it a day. A really good spot here to 
add a zip tie just for good measure. You know we got to do it before we uh, connect the rest of the exhaust, right? I think you know. So that was a little silly, quite loud, probably destroyed the microphone, but it was worth it. How do you have open headers on a car and not just, you know, give it a little sound check? Okay, so these guys are adjustable, so we're not going to go ahead and tighten that just yet. We'll get the rest of the exhaust on. All right, guys, it's time to quiet this wagon down. We're going to install this entire midsection, um, and then we're leaving the factory mufflers and resonators for now. We still have work to do the exhaust later, but the exhaust will be complete. I mean, this could be someone's exhaust for sure after this video. I'm just gonna make some changes later on down the road. So these flexible pieces, I just went ahead and slid those into the midsection, and then it's just kind of a little, little bit of a song and dance here. So slide one end in, and then Here we go. All right, so then I just pulled this back end out. We're gonna slide this little piece in here. And this is kind of a bear. We have to get this one to slide into this pipe. Peter, can you uh, hold the camera and pry? A little more, Peter. Almost, oh, oh it's so close, dude. What else you got? Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes you can let go. Woo! All right. All right, guys, after you wrestle with the mid pipe for a while, just make sure you don't see any air gaps on these slip joint slits right here and right there. And then I like to start at the front and tighten these down. Guys, at this point, the exhaust looks to be done, but there's usually at least a leak or two that we have to diagnose and then repair. So let's go ahead and start it up. All right, doesn't sound too bad. I definitely hear a ticking though. All right, got a pretty decent leak right here. I didn't go too crazy tightening these just yet. Nothing there. This is kind of what I was most worried about. And wow, we don't have any leaks from here at all. You can see this one right here. The visual. Water. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, you can see the water. Ah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, let's get our gun. Let's just tighten these up a little bit. There we go. The old water test. We're good on that one. All right, so if your flange here is mangled like mine, maybe just cut it off so it looks pretty, but it won't make any difference as far as sealing goes. There's no leak from anything in this area, uh, and now all these other ones are fixed. Just a little bit of tightening, and that's it. As expected, it sounds basically just like a stock E55. The headers really aren't gonna make that big of a difference. We're still running the factory resonator and mufflers. Almost forgot we have to cut this flange off. Get out. All right, next up, we are gonna remove this Mickey Mouse air filter that I just threw on here temporarily. We need to do a proper intake. And I was gonna try and run the factory air boxes and the factory Y that goes to the throttle body and then splits off. But I've decided against that, at least for now, because we went from a factory 74 millimeter throttle body to a gigantic Hellcat throttle body. I think this is a 92 millimeter, but these are the same ones off of the Hellcats. And I'm just a little bit worried that the factory air intake system is not gonna flow as much as we need it to flow. So. I got this, it's a three inch kit from Victory Road Performance and these normally come polished, but I sent them to my friends at Wicked Visions Customs here in Illinois. They do amazing powder coating work. 
So they did the surge tanks and the valve covers to match the blower. And then I had them powder coat everything else to match as well. So I think this is still gonna look really clean even though it is aftermarket. Um, and it comes with some really high flow filters. And I know what you're thinking, it's capped off here. Is that gonna reduce flow? And in my experience with my Turbo Trans Am, it does not. It's the overall flow. So it's not necessarily gonna run into a brick wall with these caps, but either way, we're gonna be doing some intake testing once we get on the dyno to find out the truth. So anyway, uh, let's put this all together. First part should be easy enough. I'm just gonna install this really big Y. And this is a three and a half, so we're gonna have to use a little shim on the inside. VRP does have a three and a half inch kit, but there's been a little bit of a material shortage issue. If you guys haven't noticed, so they ran out, but I don't think it'll make a huge difference. Yeah, it's three inches much bigger than the factory. They kind of squish down the tubing from the factory, so it all fits in here nicely. All right, guys, so this section and this section go together, and there's a little rubber gasket inside of here to keep it sealed. So this canister is clamped. And here's our air filter on the inside. And I already built the other one, but these are basically the pieces that you'll need per side. And then it just fits together like an intake puzzle, just like so. It's basically what it's gonna look like, and then we'll have to clock it once we get it on the car. Okay, so I have this side of the intake complete. It's basically like putting this stuff together like a puzzle and there's a lot of little tweaks to kind of get it all to fit. So this can be a little bit frustrating to get these aftermarket intakes to fit, but I think it's well worth it. I think this looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this side on. All right, so then we're just gonna slide this guy on here. I kind of pre-assembled it first. This is just a 45 degree silicone coupler that attaches to the factory cold air intake. So this kind of sucks air from the coldest area in front of the grill. It's a really nice system actually, no reason to change it. Um, so we're going to be sending the air this way into our throttle body. From the factory, they're just pieces of plastic. They're not clamped on or anything like that. So this is going to be a way tighter fit. Even if we didn't put clamps here, which if I don't have any laying around the shop, I'll probably just leave it like that. Yeah, that's about a hundred times more secure than the factory one. Okay, and then there's a little bit of adjustability kind of in and out. So you just got to kind of play with it, get it to a point that you're happy with. But Anyway, all right guys, with the intake complete, it's time for our wideband O2 sensor gauge, which is gonna go right here. All right, so first step to install the vent gauge pod. Pull that guy. And we're just gonna remove this wood trim. All right, there we go. And there's no screws or anything. These guys just slide right into here. Then we have a total of three T25s, one right here too. Then I was going to tell you, don't forget the one hidden screw right here and just yank the thing out and break it, but someone already did that for me. It's really hard to tell, but this actually pops out. And then you can see the little hole there, and that's how it's supposed to look, and then you remove the whole thing. You don't break it, but at the end of the day, two is good enough. Then we're just going to remove this entire assembly, and there is a plug right here. All right, from here, we're going to remove these vent vanes. We're not going to be reusing these. And they just kind of pry out like that. It's all going to kind of fall apart. There you go. And then we have to do the same here. There we go. We gutted it. All right, from there, we're just going to push the new gauge holder in like this, and it's going to fit into these little holes that were for the original veins. And then you will have to kind of play with it to make it work. It's a very tight fit, so it'll just take you a few minutes of fiddling. Then eventually it'll look like this. And like this. And then in order to secure the gauge into the pod, you can either glue it in or wrap some black electrical tape around this lip and then cut off the excess. And then you can just fit it in there nice and secure. It's a tight fit now. And we're good. This thing is not going anywhere. With the gauge installed, we just connect the two wiring harnesses. One of them is going to go all the way down to the wideband O2 sensor. And then on the other one, we just need power and ground. Now I know what you're thinking, we could just use one of these fuses here, but I don't like the ground connections in this area. And I'm pretty sure all of these are constant power on. And I know this because I looked back at a video I made four years ago installing the EGT gauge from AEM, the same one with the same gauge holder in the vent on my CDI diesel. And I'll show you where I got the power and ground from. Right here, we ended up using a fuse for the cigarette lighter. And we ran the wiring up real nice and easy by removing this control unit first. So let me copy my own video and do that again. All right, we're just gonna pull out our control unit. 
and the black plastic holder as well. And now we can see all the wires going in through the firewall. Then if you look in here, we have a factory bag of Mercedes-Benz fluff. All this is is for noise insulation because there's a hole here from the engine compartment into the cabin. So you don't have to remove that or anything, but we can push our wiring harness through right here. Like that. And then here it is. It's coming through the firewall and over here. And this is much easier if you're not holding the camera, but there is our harness trying to make its way up to see the light of day. All right, then we can just reach into the 211 dash abyss and pull out our harness. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the other harness that's going to eventually connect down below to the wideband O2. Just feed it in. So you have to drill a couple of little holes in the bottom of the vent, run the wiring through that. Then we'll go ahead and plug it in. And then we're just reinstalling the vent with the gauge like that. Next up, we just have to finish up the wiring for the wideband. And we're looking for key on power. So here, this one right here, 12 volts. That is on all the time. This is the one we want right here. This doesn't have any power right now. Well, you can see right now we have battery power and the fan is going nuts because I just turned the key on without the engine computer plugged in. All right, so now I'm just gonna pull out our 15 amp cigarette lighter fuse, pop it in this guy. This is an ADA circuit. Then we're gonna install a seven and a half amp fuse right here. So what we have going on here is the car's still gonna have its normal 15 amp protection for that cigarette lighter. And then we just added another circuit and the gauge, it only pulls a maximum of five amps. So I just put a seven and a half amp fuse in there. So that's gonna be our added circuit. Now we can simply plug it in like that. So we didn't have to hack up any wiring. This is completely removable and we have a nice power source. Now we just have to make that connection. And I'm gonna show you some very satisfying wiring tools here. This is a wire stripper. Once you get one of these, you'll never go back to anything else. Look at that. So much fun. I could just go around stripping wires. And then we already have a butt connector here. So we'll stick this end in. Then we have our sonic crimp tool. This is definitely one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. So we're going to hold our butt connector and then feed in this guy right here. More wiring satisfaction. Oh yeah, that feels good. Just like that, we've made a very nice and secure professional crimp. Next up, we have to strip the ground, add some shrink tubing, crimp on our ring terminal. We'll slide our black shrink tubing over. Install our ground nut. And here's our final product before we install the cover there. Uh, and this is another reason I like to pull power from that cigarette lighter fuse is because we can run the ground right from that wideband harness right through here. This is rubber and onto this nice clean ground under the hood. And I use a black wire and some black heat shrink tubing so it's not too intrusive. And also, so we have a clean install. This is the harness right here. Goes through here and through the bottom of that grommet. And this is all the wiring that's gonna connect to our wideband. So now I can kind of stuff this through. We'll zip tie it in a few spots. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but I just made a couple little notches in the plastic here. So it's a nice pass through. This cover will still fit. Everything sits down nice and flush. But at this point, we can just pop our cover back on, lock the tabs, and it looks pretty clean here. Well, it's actually pretty dirty. I still have to detail the engine compartment, but you know what I mean. Okay, so last step before our drive, we have to upload our new tune. Get the ECU data. And this already had a tune before. All we have to do is go to open file and find our tune. Some Escalade tunes. The 40 MPG EcoVet tune is in here. Whipple Wagon tune for headers, that's the one. Open, and now we can go download file. And I have a battery charger connected and the engine fan disconnected. We wanna make sure that the voltage is steady for this entire writing process. And then when you're done, for whatever reason, it said, spegnere il quadro per 10 secondi. So turn your ignition off for 10 seconds. I don't know why it's not in English, but Whatever. I just got done buttoning everything up. So everything underneath the car is done. All the wiring is done. We're about to test out the wideband O2 and then go for a ride. Uh, we don't have a clamp that'll fit here, but it's not leaking at all. So I'll probably just leave that. And aside from kind of cutting this out and making it look pretty, all of this is done. We have our center brace back on. Uh, the exhaust doesn't leak either. 
and I just installed the wideband O2 sensor. So all that wiring that you saw up top has all just miraculously disappeared. So we have this wire here running under the heat shields. The connector is actually tucked up under here, so nice and protected. And then all the rest of that wiring, I undid all of these nuts and tucked it in. It's all hidden, so no zip ties or anything. It's all underneath here. So very nice and factory-like. Uh, we have our hardware bolted in here for this little exhaust bracket that is complete. We have our O2s plugged in. Headers are looking extra shiny. Let's go test the wideband. All right, wideband works. Takes a little while to heat up, but we are good to go. All right, guys, we are all done under the hood, and I'm smiling ear to ear. This looks so, so cool. Uh, now, something we're going to save for another video is putting the heavy-duty tensioner on. Uh, I'm going to do that. Dual fuel pumps. We're going to run this thing on a flex fuel kit, so we have a few more things to do to it. Um, but right now, the tune is zipped in. The intake is done. All the exhaust is done, and we're going to go for a ride. But first, let's hear this thing. Uh -huh. That's awesome, let's go for a ride. All right, let's test this out. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> yes! Oh, I love how it stays in gear. This sounds so good. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> It just roasts them. It just roasts them no matter what. <laughs> oh my gosh. This shouldn't be possible. Wow, does this thing run good. Oh man. <laughs> so I talked to the tuner and uh, the tune that we had before in the last video, he said was a very conservative tune because we were running the mid-length headers um, and we didn't have the intake sy system. Sorry, I can't even talk. <laughs> we didn't have the intake system all done. Um, so this tune for the long tube headers and for a proper intake, um, he said, you'll notice a huge difference. He's like, that one was just detuned basically. Um, so this could be about a hundred horsepower difference from the last video. And I gotta say, man, I feel it. This is wild. This is wild. <laughs> and it sounds so good. Like at idle, it doesn't sound really any different um, because we're running factory resonators and factory mufflers. Um, but the headers just give it this really nice, deep, just throaty V8 exhaust sound. Ah, I wish you guys were here with me. This is so cool. Activate launch control. So my review on the engine mounts is they aren't as smooth as the factory ones. We all kind of knew it was going to go that route, but they're like 10 times better than the previous version, 100% uh, polyurethane mounts. Those kind of shake the car too much for a Mercedes for, for me. Um, these are a lot better than that, but you can still feel a little bit uh, when you're at idle, just in drive and park, it's totally fine. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, I drive a P100D Tesla as my daily. It's it's fast. It runs like a 10.5 in the quarter mile, um, zero to 60 in like 2.4 seconds. It's a fast car, but let me tell you, you know, even if this car isn't as fast as that, I'd much rather drive this on a cruise night, on, on pretty much any time I'm trying to have fun. I would much rather drive my E55 wagon, any of my gas powered cars, and I realized this a couple nights ago because here in Chicago, it's been cold and you know winter and everything like that for like six months. And we finally got a nice night and I had to go pick up the intakes from being powder coated and it was beautiful out. And I opened the sunroof in the Tesla and I'm going for a cruise and I'm like, this is, you know, this should be great. And it just, it wasn't, it wasn't that fun. Like it's a, I love the car, don't get me wrong, but I wanted this, I wanted this or my Trans Am or you know, my Lightning or something like that. So. There is just so much to be said. That kind of stuff makes me feel so much better about the fact that everything is kind of going electric, that these aren't ever going anywhere. Like, yeah, there's no way. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, this 
transmission shifts great. If you guys were around for the last one, I put a, uh, a different transmission control unit in it, and it is spot on. Spot on. Oh, this gives me the chills. I highly recommend modding an M113K engine, people. I've made a lot of E55 videos, a lot of mod videos. If you haven't gathered that from me yet, just let me officially say it. Mod an M113K. It's a phenomenal engine. Mwah! Good job, Mercedes and AMG. All right, let's just check everything over. So I didn't get a chance to do the heavy-duty belt tensioner just yet. We'll do it in the next video. Um, but this is holding up really well. I don't suspect any belt slip or anything. Uh, the belt is staying on perfectly. It doesn't look to be abnormally worn, so we're good to go there. The intakes are solid, looking pretty. I really like this for an aftermarket setup. I think it looks cool. Um, but I do agree with a lot of you guys, the factory air boxes, especially on a Mercedes, do look really nice. So I'll figure out how to get those to work with this gigantic Hellcat throttle body. Um, and then when we go on the dyno, we'll just swap them and, and that's it. You guys will know for sure. Also, once we get that heavy duty tensioner with the big bracket and everything, it'll kind of hide these lines right here and make this just look so, so much better. But anyway, I am absolutely in love with this wagon even more than I was when I first got it. This has always been a dream car for me and it still blows my mind that they produced and sold so few of these in the United States, like 191 or two or something like that in 2005 and 2006 and then some of the later generations were even more rare which is crazy people in america buy wagons these are awesome it's a mess back here i got kids stuff and whatnot but look at look at the room you get and then there's seats in there anyway guys if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up share the video subscribe if you're new i'm going to leave you with a cool montage that we're about to go make with those guys uh, of the wagon just kind of cruising down a very nice uh, tree line forest preserve road. So I hope you guys enjoy that and I will see you all in the next video. And they're on TikTok now, they, they make dance videos.